Hi everyone. I've come to do a quick show of a deck that I got for Christmas, which was one that um, my husband very kindly managed to get for me. I've shown, I've told a brief story of how he got it um, on my other video, but it is the Taroki Fin Dalla Tor in Bologna. Yeah? And my pronunciations are not great, but I tried Google Translate. So um, this is a beautiful deck. I love it. It's one of 500. Um, and my husband, for those of you who haven't seen it, I saw it first on Tom Benjamin's uh, channel and I am studying Marseille. So I wanted a few really quite old uh, original decks. I think also I might have seen it uh, on Nobody's Here. Um, but this is a beautiful deck. So anyway, um, my husband went on to find it, could only find it on the uh, International Museum of um, Tarot in Italy and went through the entire um, process in Italian to order it for me before realising he could have had it translated into English. But he was very proud of himself and I'm very proud of him for doing it for me. Um, it is one of 500, but it should have come with a signed uh, card from the curator. And it's not that it's not there. So I will have to ask for that. Um, but this is the backs and the card stock is is very much like um, the, uh, the court the, um, to Rocky is that the correct word for it? The El Managello deck that I've got. My my ability to remember things is appalling. Now I know I'm at that time where my brain is porridge, but in even so, shamefully not able to give you um, the correct wording. Just ignore this crone in her wafflings. Um, but it it is it is gorgeous it is it's a lovely which is why i wanted it um and i love this little leaflet that comes with it and tells you all about it i'm not going to read all of it but i will read you um some of it so it um it says that after 400 years a historical tarot deck comes back to life the International Museum of Tarot sought to publish an ancient Italian deck that was as yet unpublished in, modern, in the modern era. Something not too far from the model that gave rise to the 18th century iconic illustrations of the so-called Tarot of Marseille. Well known to enthusiasts and consequently to a large degree influential over decks published during subsequent centuries. This choice went to the 17th century exemplary Bolognese deck of cards known as the Fin de la Tour, which fortunately passed down to us nearly complete and in fairly good condition. The only known example is preserved as Tarot Bolognese, Bolognese, Bolognese oh, by the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. Um, the original card size was 4.1 inches by 1.7 inches and the new edition cards are 2.7 inches by 5.9. Um, at the time of production, being a Bolognese style deck meant it would be reduced from the traditional tarot deck of 78 cards to 62 cards eliminating the minor arcana numbered 2, 3, 4 and 5 of each suit, following the custom in vogue in Bologna since at least the mid 16th century. So obviously they have um, had to go through and um, add those decks. It also talks about curiosities over this um, precious car deck of cards. Um, in the early tarot deck, there are still traditional depict de depictions of the high priestess, empress, emperor and pope that were viewed unfavourably by authorities of the papal states and which were subsequently replaced in tar tarocchin chino bolognese, first by two popes and two emperors, by at least 1669 and eventually by images of the four Moors during the, the late 17th century. Um, and then it goes on to talk about some interesting um, 
points in on the cards, the High Priestess and the Pope are the most remarkable cards of the Major Arcana. The High Priestess holds a key and makes a blessing with the Latin gesture, while the Pope has a closed book and holds a cross. The latter also reveals st um, stigmata on the hands, which is really interesting. I've not seen that in a deck before and has a youthful beardless face. Um, and then it goes on to talk about other bits and pieces um, to do with specific cards. It talks about the back of the cards. Um, on the back of the cards are two winged angels. One is the classic Cupid with a bow and arrow, while the other points to the large tree with a heart ha hanging like fruit. This is probably a reference to the myth of Apollo and Daphne, both struck by arrows of Eros, but with opposite results. Apollo fell in love with Daphne while she flatly refused his advances after a long chase through the woods. So as not to give in to the passions of the god of oracles, this nymph prayed for an escape and was thus transformed into a sweetly scented laurel plant. Uh, known as Daphne in Greek and which consequently became symbolic tribute to great poets in ancient Greece. I love, oh, oh sorry, <laughs> I love this beautiful uh, touch of mythology in there. Um, and then there's a lovely little bit about the, the, the work in April 2014, um, Moreno Poltroneri and um, Ernesto Fazzoli, Fazzoli, sorry, I'm sorry, my Italian's not great, of the International Museum of Tarot began the challenge of returning this precious Bolognese tarot of the 17th century back to production. Um, they printed them on A4 uh, form, format sheets first to define the contours and the colours using professional pastels. Um, they were photoshopped to clean up smudges caused by time and wear. Um, but one of the goals was not to interfere creativity, creatively with the look of these cards, but to preserve the original freshness with this characteristics of the era and a valuable and, dis and, and a valuable and distinctive artwork. So the end result is respectful of the unique design, contours and colours while, while adding a greater definition to the innate beauty and appearance inherent in the original imagery. And I think that's just absolutely lovely. Um, so without further ado, let's have a look at these. Now I've done this recording a couple of times so I can't now remember what I've said and what I haven't said. So um, but I haven't shown the cards and here we go. Um, now, this is obviously the magician. I, for me, I'm just, I'm loving this deck. Um, I have now got a few Marseilles, but one of my goals is to try and um, purchase some of the older historical uh, decks. Um, so here we have um, obviously the Empress and here we have the Emperor and obviously back as I was talking all over her is this beautiful High Priestess showing the exactly what they said the sign and holding the keys and then I mean I, I can't tell you how be I, this is the first time I've seen this deck properly because I purposely didn't unseal it until I actually did the video. And here we have our, um, uh, what's wrong with me? Hierophant with the stigmata. And I've not seen that before. Stunning. Um, and obviously it's really, um, it's lovely that they actually, I mean, they call him the Pope. So I, I have to remember to, to get the, the right words um, for each of the, the decks, but as a lover's card, I, I, and there's soft pinks in here, really beautiful soft colours. Um, and here we have the chariot. And as you can see, they, they're numbered, but they're, they're just numbered, it's got a very tiny little numbering, I think that is at the top. Um, here we have justice and again 
I, uh, when you go back to the original Marseille style decks, we have this difference in the numbering between eight being the justice card um, and um, 11 being strength, uh, which this is that's 11 is my um, year. So I'm going with the original Marseille, but for good measure, I'm popping a few others in um, to go with it. There's no lion. There's no. I found from watching um, Nobody's Here and listening to Tom Benjamin that my interest in the origins of the tarot, the history and obviously the different cultures uh, and the way each deck has been influenced by what was fashionable at the time, what wasn't fashionable at the time um, and just generally what you are, you would have had in that era really fascinates me so much so that um, this deck I haven't seen anything with this kind of colouring um, personally. I mean, I've now got a few Marseille decks and I've got some really lovely ones. And I'm, this reminds me in colours, actually, of the Marshmallow Tarot. And I wonder if, if that wasn't an influence. But um, the sun, obviously, this is the... Uh, moon. No, was, a, was that the star? It was a star, wasn't it? It must be. A star. It, it does mention also in this little bit that a lot of the um, cards have got these couples in, which is is rather lovely. This is a star card, obviously. Um, all back to front and all over the place. And my head is like porridge, to be fair, at the moment. Um, judgment. And we have the world. But for me, this deck is just amazing. And now we come on to the miners. Um, the cardstock. I mean, it. Everything about it feels beautiful. And one of the things that I find a little bit hard to work out or in my study of Marseille is, is the colour associations. And obviously, depending on where you are, um, you will get that um, variation in the colours. Um, and that, that caused me a bit of a problem to start with because I thought, well, if I'm supposed to be studying the colours to each deck or to each card, then surely they should remain the same. And then I thought, well, no, that's silly. You're just going to have to go with whatever the deck colour um, portrays, because otherwise you're you're just never going to to manage it. I've I've haven't actually got further than numer numerology yet. I'm still on chapter one of the uh, Tower on Earth by Tom Benjamin because uh, numbers isn't my thing and I've really got to get my head around it. I've done all the prep, I've just got to amalgamate it all together and that's one of my jobs while I'm down here. Um, and that's exactly it. I am brought all my Christmas presents. We didn't. I didn't get to open my presents until Christmas afternoon when we got here. And uh, I'm, I'm just loving this deck. I'm loving the colours. I'm loving everything about it. It's just got... It feels lovely, it feels old. Um, and my time while I'm away is to literally just spend... Oh, look, there's flowers. We've got little flowers growing in those ones. It's to just spend my time with my books and my study and I have to get up to date with my Tom Benjamin homework because I've been neglectful that's one of my studies my journaling for the new year is 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 nearly there um 
and obviously it's a work in progress, but I just would like to be in a position where I can start the year not on a back foot. And I hadn't appreciated that there is quite a variance between the different styles of different periods and how fascinating it is. I love the crispness of these um, pentacles. They, you know, if you're a skilled reader, which I am not, um, I'm not even sure I'd call myself a reader, but if you are skilled in the art of this, um, this is just so probably so easy to 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 read they've done it differently look they've put the the name there as opposed to oh, i do yeah so if i'm right they normally have name round yeah we haven't got that there or in the two it's normally around the two but they've chosen to do it that way which I think is a lovely touch everything about this deck is beautiful um, so I and I am not in any way an authoritarian there are some wonderful YouTube people who have studied long and hard and know all about decks of all different um, historical times and places. But from my very limited knowledge and experience, I have to say, I think that this deck has been done with utter respect and um, really uh, beautifully empathic to the, the, the period. I love it absolutely love it i'm so glad that that i have it in my collection and i think it originally you could get it in a wooden box if i'm not mistaken i could be confused because i've looked at a few um but i was just glad to have it so maybe you know i will get a wooden box for this one actually because i think it really needs something I just I love it so much the colors are warm and vibrant and rich and full of, of you know the most amazing um, warmth and everything about this deck just brings out a lovely feeling when I'm holding it um, what what a nice nice deck to work with um, so that's the, the cards. It came with, if I haven't said already, because as I say, I did it several times, this gorgeous little postcard with a stamp on the back and a lovely leaflet about the museum, which if you get to go, I would go. I want to go. Um, so that's it, guys. That's the video that should have been quite quick and, and wasn't. But um, I wanted to share this with you. Um, I think that they have done a phenomenal job. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.